started with our service, with our praise and worship on this morning. Amen. 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 We're going to ask everyone to stand at this time as we do the call of worship, and we will do this in unison. The Bible admonishes us to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. I need the old. I need the Give us another chance. You are God of a second chance. I heard someone said that you are God of a third and a fourth chance, but oh God, we just want to thank you. We thank you for your mercy. You thank, we thank you for your deliverance. Oh God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you, God, for waking us up this morning. Oh God, we thank you for the touch with the finger of love. Oh God, we thank you for the activities of our limbs. We thank you for being in our right mind. Oh God, we asking you right now to deliver us, to save us, God, to help us, Lord. Oh God, we ask you to abide within us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, touch us, God. Fill us up, Lord. Fill us up with your spirit, God. Oh God, fill us with your spirit. Oh, in the name of Jesus, help us to move ourselves out the way and let you take over, God. In the name of Jesus, we ask you to touch each and every one that is here. Bless those who are on the way. Touch those who can't make it out on today, God. In the name of Jesus, anoint those that are sick in their bodies. Touch those who need uh, financial help, God. Touch those who need mental help, God. Touch those who need healing, Lord. In the name of Jesus, oh God, we ask you to touch the confused mind. Oh God, we ask you to touch those who are thinking about suicide. In the name of Jesus, touch those who are, are abused, God. Oh God, touch our children, God. Touch our children, God. Touch our children, God. Touch our children, God. Save them, 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 God. Oh, God, the devil's trying to take our children. But in the name of Jesus, we're asking you, God, to protect and watch over them. Oh, God, as they 
go to school, God, and come home, God, watch over them in the name of Jesus. Not only here in Flint, but all over the world, God. Well, take care of our children, Lord. Take care of our children, Lord. Oh, God, we thank you right now, God. We thank you, God. And God, we ask you to touch living word. Touch us right now, God. Touch us, son. Touch us, Lord. In the name of Jesus, take us to where we need to be, God, in you. In the name of Jesus, fill us up, Lord. Fill us up, Lord. Oh, God, keep us encouraging you. In the name of Jesus, oh, God, our hope is in you. Our trust is in you. Our love is in you. All we do is in you. In the name of Jesus, we ask you to lead us, God. And, uh, and, 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 and oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lead us, Lord. 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 Take us in the way you want us to go. Lead us, Lord. Have us to do what you want us to do. Lead us, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And oh God, as the word come forth on today, God, we ask you to bless the messenger, oh God. Give him strength, God. Give him strength, God. Touch him, Lord. Anoint him, Lord. Bless your word on today, Lord. Let your word be a blessing and a healing unto us. In Jesus' name, oh God. Oh God, we ask to touch us, Lord. Touch us, Lord. And we're going to be careful to give your name the praise. We're going to be careful to give your name the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name, we pray. 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 Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Amen. I'm going to be reading in your hearing coming from Psalms 61. And the word is Hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the cover of thy wings, Salah. For thou, O God, hast heard my vows. Thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. Thou wilt prolong the king's life and his years as many generations. He shall abide before God forever. O oh, prepare mercy and truth which may preserve him. So will I sing praise unto thy name forever that I may daily perform my vows. And the word of the Lord is blessed. You are now in the hands of Elder Riley in our music ministry. Let's say amen for him at this time. Real, real, Jesus is real to me. Oh, yes, gave me the victory. So many people doubt him. I can't live without him. That is why I love him so. He's so real to me. I'll take Jesus for mine. I'll take Jesus for mine. You may have this whole wide world, but I'll take Jesus for mine. Oh, I'll take Jesus for mine. I'll take Jesus for mine. You may have this whole wide world, but I'll take Jesus for mine. I'll take Jesus for mine. I'll take Jesus for mine. You may have this whole wide world, but I'll take Jesus for mine. I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. 
I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. If it had not been for Jesus, where would I be? I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. If it had not been for Jesus, where would I be? I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. Oh, he brought me out of sin and shame. Oh, he brought me out of sin and shame. Oh, he brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light. I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. He saved me. He saved me. He brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light. Anybody glad that he saved you? He saved me. He saved my soul. He made me whole. He saved me. He saved me. He saved me. He saved me. Brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light. Anybody glad that he saved you? Anybody glad that he saved you? Anybody glad that he saved you? He saved me. He saved my soul. He made me whole. Put those hands together. Anybody love the Lord today? If you love him, say, Lord, I love you. Say, Lord, I adore you. You are my strength. You are my peace. Hallelujah. Oh, my. 
my strength Strength like no other Strength like no other Reaches to me Will you lift your voice and help me sing this one more time? You are my strength Strength like no other Strength like no other Reaches to me Reaches to me Oh, your peace it reaches Reaches to me Yeah, last time Reaches to me. Our Father and our God, it's in you that we live, move, and have our very existence. Without you, we can do absolutely nothing. We invite you into this house. We invite your presence in. You are welcome here. Help us to build the atmosphere that will be conducive to your visitation. Stop by here. Touch us today those that are sick, those that are afflicted. Lay your hands upon them now. You say it in your word to ask and it shall be given. Seek ye shall find, knock and the door would be open. We pray for El Riley's family on this Lord's day. Everybody that says pray for my children, we are praying for them now. Everybody that said call my name, we lift you up now. And Father, I invite you into this place. I can do nothing without you. So let your presence rest here. Let it abide here one by one and name by name. Don't let our coming be in vain. Let us be better because we came here on today. And I pray now that you will touch these lips of clay. Teach me what to say, how to say, and when to say it. Hide me behind the cross. Let no flesh glory in your sight. Let my highest place be at Jesus' feet. And I will praise your name forever and ever. Amen. Reverend Clergy, Evangelist Jones, Sister Heiter, uh, Mother Watson, each of you the people of the Lord. What a joy it is to be in the Lord's house one more time. Um, I understand perfectly uh, what Minister Johnson is saying, the weather is changing. Uh, I, I guess I, I'm just me. Uh, Sister Heiter loves beautiful, bright, sunshiny days. And she will tell the Lord how she thank him for that bright, sunshiny day. And I tell her, we ought to thank him for every day. <laughs> and tell you just where I was this morning when I got up ran out and started the car it was a little chilly and I said thank you Lord I'm able to feel the cold weather yeah thank you yeah you have to look for the good in everything because see we are saying that but somebody 
can't feel the coolness of the weather on today. And so, yeah, Father, I thank you. This is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And so I thank you for who you are. I praise you. I extol you. I glorify you. I magnify you. I make your name big among the people. I realize that it's in, in you that I live, move, and have my being. I offer myself up to you now. I offer myself a living sacrifice. I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you praise. Get the best out of me. Get the best praise that you can. Get the best out of me. In Jesus' name, I thank you for it. I thank you. In Jesus' name. Oh, God bless. God bless. I feel better now. Like the old preachers used to say, now don't you feel better? Yeah, I feel better now. God bless the young people that are here on today. Uh, I have a continuous prayer for young people because they go through things that we didn't think about going through when I was their age. When we were in school about the, the worst uh, drill we had was a tornado drill. Uh, I don't know what getting under the desk was going to do if the tornado hit, but we just had tornado drills. And, and now they have to have drills to protect themselves against, um, I've got to be real careful here. Um, because see sometimes you can't see everything to come to your mind and I'm behind the sacred desk and I honor this spot uh, so sometimes uh, people that have been misplaced in life uh, however it is and they want to shoot up a school and people that they don't even know you, I mean you, you have no beef with them and uh, you have no problems doing that drive-by shootings and all of this type of nonsense. But all of this indicates that the Lord is soon to come. And so it behooves us to be ready when he comes. If I ask you to pray for me today, could I get prayers for a little bit? I'm asking, I'm uh, coveting your prayers. Um, I'm, 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 I'm glad to be here. I'm, I'm glad to be at Living Word today. Um, I think we understand that um, we are in places when the Lord wants us there. And uh, I think I'm where I'm supposed to be this morning. I just, I feel that in, in my heart. And in fact, I, I, I think with that, I was kind of slipping into my message. I didn't intend to slip into it that fast. But um, I come slipping into my message. I'm going to the Old Testament. Uh, today in 1 Kings chapter 17 and I'm not certain how many verses I'm going to read but I'm going to start verse 1 verse Kings and Elijah well, before I read, let me, let me tell you what my subject is. I'm going to talk about a place called there. A, a place called there. 
Um, I'll even give you a little bit of history on where I got that uh, from. Uh, I got it from John Olstein. He has a little small pamphlet looking book. Uh, not Joel, John, who is uh, Joel's father. And he published a little book. And the title of it was A Place Called There. And it was an enjoyable read uh, for me. Um, and I'm, I'm going to skip ahead of myself and then come back since I started talking a little bit. The church that I served at before I came here was on Brook Drive. And um, when we were gathering all of our stuff up, it was, it was a difficult day when we packed up and moved uh, our little belongings back here. <laughs> and um, when I was getting ready to leave uh, that area, a person dropped by the church and he just said, uh, uh, where are you going now? And I didn't quite like the tone that he used. Thank God for salvation. Because yes. <laughs> there was a day I would have just challenged his tone. You know, how, how come you, uh, you know. There was a day I challenged the look. Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> you know, so thank God for salvation. And um, he said, uh, where are you going now? I said, Zarephath. And he looked at me like a deer looking in headlights. And I'm thinking, if you read your book, you know what I'm talking about now. <laughs> so, so don't think you're going to just walk up here and stump me like I have nowhere to go because I am in Christ. And if I am in Christ, he will lead me, he will guide me, and he will direct my path. And so I would tell people I'm going to Zarephath, and I'm glad they didn't ask me where it was. <laughs> because there are times you may be headed to Zarephath, and you don't really know where it is. That's when you depend on the Lord. And when I was serving uh, at the other church, there would be times people in this area would say to me, you yet driving all the way up there? Well, I can't get there if I don't go all the way. <laughs> I, 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 can't, I can't get to my there unless I go all the way. I can't stop in Lansing and think I'm there. And it would just be interesting to me how people would ask me certain questions uh, like they gonna stump me with where I am. Uh, <laughs> that's why I lean and depend on him. Just lean and depend on him. And I, now this I didn't know I, I was going to say uh, today. But when, when I got a call to ask if I would come and serve as interim here, um, when, the word, when the question was asked, the question was asked just right. Because had it been asked, in a different fashion, I might yet be at the brook, I don't know. <laughs> but I wouldn't, God is just something, isn't he? He's amazing how, how he works uh, with us. And, and, and so um, the, the question was asked to me about me coming and serving in the fashion where it, 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 and something in my spirit said, I think I can work with that. 
See, I think I can work with that. And so to God be the glory for the things he's done. And Elijah, the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, who was the worst king ever, just make note, Ahab was the worst king ever lived. As, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew or rain these years, but according to my word. Somebody help me say my word. Now, I want you to know at this point, he wasn't saying, even though the Lord told him what to say, his words had power. Because he said, Elijah said, it will not be due or rain upon the earth. And, and what he really could have said it like this. I'm going to speak and the rain will stop and it will not start until I speak again. And that's accurate. And so, and the, the word of the Lord came unto him saying, get the Hence, and turn the eastward. And you know, we could do a whole message. Probably anybody in here could do a whole message on eastward. Uh, but turn the eastward and hide thyself by the brook chariot that is before Jordan. So where was he going? To the brook. I, that's why I told y'all that the church that I came from was on brook. <laughs> drive. It was on brook drive. So you can't shock me and think if, if, if things dry up at the brook, that it's dry everywhere. <laughs> Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh -huh. And and the second verse, and and the word of the, of the Lord came unto me, saying, "Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook chariot that is before Jordan." Verse four, and it shall be that thou shall drink of the brook and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. Somebody help me say there. Yes. Okay. Now, the ravens are going to feed him there. Now, they were not going to fly all over the wilderness looking for him. If the Lord said to go down by the brook chariot that's before Jordan, I'm going to have the ravens to come and feed you there. That's where you need to be. At the place called there because God could have fed him anywhere but he said I'm going to feed you there ah, it's good to be in your there and it's good to know where you're 
there is. When you know where you there is, just because your feelings is hurt one day, you don't run off and leave you there. That's if you know you're there. I, I need your prayer. This is a slow walking message today. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. Yeah, help me uh, do according to the Lord's word. For he went and dwelt by the brook chariot that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, bread and flesh in the evenings, and he drank of the brook. Now this is a familiar passage passage of scripture and I know you've read it over and over but while you were reading it did it ever cross your mind where the ravens got the bread <laughs> and the flesh from now li listen how um, the, the uh, instructions go go to the brook I'm going to in struck the dirty bird. <laughs> See, some of us couldn't get fed because we want the bald eagle. <laughs> I want the bald eagle. No, I don't know why he chose the ravens, but that's who he chose. So the instructions told him, go, go, go to the brook, Stay there. I have commanded, which tells us that not only does he have power over the elements, which he can say rain or don't rain. He can say storm cease, wave cease. So he had power, but he also had power over all creations and at this point he had power over the ravens and he told the raven what to do I refuse to let a big black bird be more obedient than I am not, not, not a bird if a bird can obey, why can't I obey? Because we are the ones that's in his image and in his likeness. But he speaks to a bird and a bird. Now, one writer said he, and I don't know, this is not in scripture. He believed that he was, he was that, see, now, number, you have to understand there was more than one raven. There's an S on ravens. So there was more than one bird that would go and get the bread and the flesh. Now, one writer believes that he was getting it <laughs> from Ahab's kitchen. <laughs> they, they said Ahab had plenty of food. And while they were cooking, and they'd get stuff and sit it on a platter, and bird would come through and get him a paw and go to the prophet and, and drop it off there. <laughs> and when he dropped it off, the prophet, now he didn't he didn't say. The ravens are going to drop it off and I want you to cook it and eat it. He didn't say that. He just said they were going to feed you there. Which leaves the door open for some well done, medium well, 
<laughs> I mean, I don't know how he liked it. But he brought him a meal. And when he finished eating the meal, he drank from the brook. You know, we've gotten away from preachers going, y'all gonna let me talk for a minute today. I, know, I, I mean, I know it ain't no hallelujah uh, swing from the chandelier uh, type of message, but I feel just that good. I, I, I feel as good as if I was shang, uh, swinging from a chandelier. So, you know, preachers don't come by the house uh, on Sunday afternoon like they did years ago. Years ago, they did invite the preacher to the house on Sunday. And the children would be looking and peeping, <laughs> trying to see if their piece of chicken going to be left, mother. Because they, they, they didn't want that preacher to eat up all of the chicken. <laughs> and thank God for a uh, new day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come. You know, the question is, you know, they they will children concerned about whether the preacher was going to eat up all of the chicken and the preacher was probably concerned about whether he was going to eat at all. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. Now that that wasn't in the notes. <laughs> And it, and it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Sometimes when you know you heard God and God sent you to a there and there seems to have dried up on you. You can't give up on God because God will not give up on you. And so just because uh, the brook dried up, uh, don't get indignant with God because if he sent you to the brook, he knows where Jerapheth, uh, yeah, Jerapheth, I'm saying that right? Zarephath, I knew that didn't sound right. <laughs> Zarephath, he, he, he understands where it is. And so if the, if the brook dries up, I'm, don't move unless the Lord says move. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell where? There. He's moving him from one there to another there. And so wherever you move, you need to make certain that you hear the Lord. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman where? There to sustain thee. Now, of all the people in the world to get to sustain him, God chooses a widow. And if there are any single people in, in the audience, don't take offense to this because I did this one time and an offense was taken. Um, but it, it, it's nothing wrong with the widow. But when I said of all of the people, that he sent him to, he sent him to a widow. You see, because widows generally didn't have much provision. They didn't have much. Because back in those days, if there were a line of brothers, 
if, 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 if a woman was married and her husband died and there was another eligible brother, then that brother married the wife. And it, it went down to, if, if brothers kept dying, she kept married. <laughs> it's in the book. And so if you made it to widow status, <laughs> there wasn't no more brothers. <laughs> all, all the brothers were gone. <laughs> and now you have to fend for yourself. And so that's why I say of all of the people to send the prophet to, he sent him to a widow so he could show himself God. I'm going to show you how strong I am. I'm going to show you how powerful I am. So sometimes when you are operating in your there, you are not just operating in your there for you. You are operating in your there for somebody else. And so he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there. Thought y'all were going to help me preach right along about that. The, 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 the widow woman was there. So you have to be at your place called there. Gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. He had traveled and it was a famine in the land and his throat was dry and he needed a little water. And she didn't mind going and getting him a little water, but you know, just like a preacher, he said, and as uh, she was going to, to fetch, he called to her uh, and, and said, uh, bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. Now I don't mind giving you a little water, but now you want my whole cake. <laughs> and, and, and she wasn't as willing to give up the cake as she was a little bit of water. Let me digress uh, just a little bit. I hate to break into the scripture like this, but this, um, in fact, it came across my mind while I was uh, working on this message. I was doing a job in, um, in Ypsilanti, and, and you know by now that, that uh, you know, I'm a licensed master plumber, so I was doing some plumbing work. I was in uh, an apartment complex. The uh, apartment that I was working in was empty. And um, there were, uh, you know, occupied apartments on either side of me. And so I had been working in this empty apartment all day long. And it was getting late. It was close to dark. And I had one more joint. Oh, my God. See, you can't even preach these days. <laughs> Let me explain this joint. <laughs> when, when you connect a pipe and a fitting, it's called a joint. <laughs> Lord have mercy. It's tight these days. I mean, brother can't even preach unless he qualifies. <laughs> and as soon as I said, I, Ooh, I wish I could have caught that one. But, you know, it was out then. It, it was out. Thank you. So, so I had I, I, just, just this one area. And, 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 and those of you that have soldered pipe before, you know if there's a little water in the pipe, that solder is not going to melt. It's not going to run. And I had heated. 
I had heeded, I, and the solder would not run. Well, I grew up in, in, in Texas, and my dad is a plumber, so he taught me some of the old plumbing tricks that you don't learn in apprenticeship school. Now, he, he said to my older brother and I, because he learned to read blueprints looking over what he said, the man's shoulder. And my dad learned to read blueprints like that and learned to pipe. And he said, you boys are not going to learn to read blueprints like that. You're going to go to school and learn how to read blueprints. And that was all right, but what I needed that day, they didn't teach me in school. I needed one of my daddy's old tricks. And so what daddy would do when he had a pipe that he couldn't, uh, get the water to stop completely in, um, he'd take a piece of uh, a slice of bread and he would, thank you, and he'd stick it in the pipe. And while the bread is absorbing the water, he'll sort of the joint right, the pipe right quick. So he would, he would solder it up. And then he'd take the aerators off the faucets upstairs, turn the water on, and the bread would come out. And so I was going to pull one of my dad's trick. I had one problem, the bread. I, I, I didn't have any bread. So I knew that there was a lady sitting next door. She had been sitting out on the porch uh, as I went in and out, so I went out, she wasn't sitting on the porch, so I knocked on her door. And she opened the door and I gave her the scenario that I just gave you and I, I said, I just, I just wonder if you would give me uh, a, a couple of slices of bread. And uh, she said, and she's still looking at me strange, she, she's not certain that I just want a slice of bread or not. And so finally she comes back to the door. She gives me two slices of bread. And I don't know why I did. To this day, I don't know why I said what I said. But when she gave me the bread, I took it in my hand. I said, you got any meat to go with this? <laughs> <laughs> she looked at me, head turned sideways. I thought I was just teasing. I was, I was just teasing. So I can understand how this widow might have been willing to give up a little water, but she didn't want to give up the cake. And so she said, as the Lord thy God liveth. I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I gathereth two sticks that I might go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. She must have felt defeated. She must have been overwhelmed with the thought that I'm going to eat one more cake with my boy and then we're going to die. And I don't know how old the boy was. The Bible doesn't give, but I'm, I'm certain he was weaned because this boy was gnawing on cake too. Because she said, you know, me and the boy are going to eat this. But then the prophet did something strange. He said, but, but make me thereof a little cake first. And, and bring it unto me. 
and after make for thee and thy son. Boy, that was good news. Which said, when I make a little bit for the prophet, I'm going to yet have some for me and my son. For thus said the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. It's amazing when you obey God what he will do for you. God will take care of you. And I hope you appreciate the fact that you are hearing this message preached, and I'm not raising an offering. <laughs> because usually when you hear from the lady of Zarephath, uh, you start tightening up on your wallet because they go get it. <laughs> they going to tell you that, and, and it is true, that, that the lady gave first and then her meal barrel did not waste, but there is more than that in the message. There is obedience in the message. There, there is sustaining, not just for the prophet, but for the widow and her son. And she went and did according to the sayings of Elijah. Now, if I slip up and say Elisha sometime, it scratch that, you know I mean Elijah. And she and her son, and she and he, and her house did eat many days. So when you do what God asks you to do, it's, he's obligated to make provisions for you because you did what he said do. And I realize there are times when we can be in the wrong place at the wrong time. That's when something unfortunate happens to you and it was no fault of your own. And then there is a time where you're in the right place at the right time. When something good is created for you and you didn't even have to work for it. That was a promotion in place. And it seems as though somebody else was going to get the promotion, but they were moved to another spot. And you were there at that time. You were at the right place at the right time. And something good just happened for you. You didn't have to do anything to make it happen. Then they, I started to work on this. I'm about to change my mind. Uh, the right place at the wrong time. And so if you want to check that out, that's going to be your homework. Just go and see what can happen if you're at the right place at the wrong time. So it's important that we always hear from God. So the safest place is to hear from God. Where is my there? Where is my there? Where do you want me? It's a sad thing to try to operate outside of your there. Um, we don't have much talk about affirmative action 
these days, but back in the day when they were talking about affirmative action, there was a black man that was talking about suing a radio station, and they asked him why was he going to sue the radio station, and it was because he couldn't get the job that he wanted to get at the radio station. And they said, well, what job do you want? And he said, the, 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 the disc jockey. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wrong place. You need to find, I, now this probably only happened in southern states. This probably never happened in, uh, in, in northern states. Y'all ever seen people that get happy? They get, get happy and they start doing their hands like this. And, and, and somebody in the audience get the uh, idea that the Lord is trying to teach them uh, to play. And I'm not against anybody that God has anointed to play, okay? You, you play, play on, play on. And, and, and so, but now I heard this, this one and I just knew that was not her there. But she was just going. And somebody got her and led her over to the piano preacher. <laughs> the worst sounding noise that I had ever, oh, boom, 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 boom. You know, a preacher, if I get happy and start like that, stay on the organ. <laughs> that, that is not my there. That I, I, I have no business on the organ. I'm just happy. That, that's all. But don't, don't get off of the organ. So we need to know what God said our there is. Because you are successful when you operate in the there that God placed you in. If you are operating outside of the there that God placed you, you might make mistakes. You might make an arrow. And, and, and see, because what you got to understand that it, when you look at the word there, there's not a lot of difference in there and here. You drop the T off of there, and you have here. Put the T on here, and you have there. So if I start doing like this, I need to drop the T and stay here. <laughs> That's my, I don't know how else to say it, y'all. <laughs> That's the best I could do with it. And I'm, I'm almost finished. I, I can tell now I'm not going to get to. I put too much in here. Um, one writer was trying to define his destiny. And he said to, the way he could understand his destiny is that he came from nowhere he is now here, and he's going back to nowhere. And so when you have the word nowhere, if you just move the W over to the N-O, then you have now here. And when you leave now here, you're going back to nowhere, and you'll know that place for the first time. Genesis 26, 1. And there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of, uh, of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Jerah. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. 
dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. So you have to understand when the Lord says go and when the Lord says stay. And whether you go or whether you stay, if you're obeying the Lord, you are in, you are there. And you are where the Lord wanted you. I'm, let me try one more scripture. Elijah was a man subject to like passion as we are. And he prayed honestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And, and so um, in this passage, it gives indications of how long the drought really lasted. And I'm trying to move to my conclusion. Elijah was not perfect, yet he called fire down from heaven three times. He was the first person to raise another person from the dead. He was responsible for one of the greatest revivals that the world ever knew. He started and ended a three and a half year drought. He is one of only two men that never experienced death. He was just caught up alive. And Enoch is the second man. But he was just caught up alive. And that encourages me to know that if I'm yet here when the Lord comes, I don't have to worry about those that went asleep ahead of me. I know that I can yet be caught up and I can go and be with the Lord. And so my desire today is to be in my there. I need to be exactly where the Lord wants me to be. I'm telling him every day that I'm completely and totally yielding myself to you. Uh, I am no more my own, but I'm bought with a price. Uh, when you say go, I go. When you say stay, I stay. I just want to be found in your there. Uh, when I was found in your there, uh, I had had somebody that was praying for me uh, and introduced me to the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Uh, and while I was there, uh, I had an encounter with the Lord. Uh, and in that encounter, uh, I spoke with new tongues. Uh, I had the glossolalia experience. Uh, I met God in a brand new way. Uh, so I I understand what it is to be in your there. So I'm asking you every day to help me to be in my there. Help me to be where you call me to be. And then I can say it is well. It is well. It is well with my soul when peace like a river attentive my way even if sorrows like seas billow roll whatever my lot you taught me to say it's well it's well with my soul you may be listening Facebook or YouTube or you may be in the audience with us on today and you have not accepted him as your Lord and as your Savior I want you to know that this is your moment this is your hour 
don't let it pass you by. Check with him and see if you are here, but it's really you're there. Do you really want me here? Do you want me to come forward? Do you want me to accept you as my Lord and Savior today? Yesterday is bankrupt. Tomorrow is no more than a promissory note. The only real cash that you have is this very moment. Father, I pray now for any person that have not accepted you as their Lord and Savior. I pray that you will prick their hearts. Let them know that the days are passing swiftly. The night is at hand. And today you hear my voice. Harden not your heart. Forgive us of our sins. Blot out our transgressions. Our sins are before us. I ask if you would cast them as far as the east is from the west and remember them no more. Save, Lord. Save, Lord. Save, Lord. Save, Lord. Jesus saves. Save us today. In Jesus' name. Father, I pray now that you will take us to our several homes, bring us back to this place at the time you've appointed. May the grace of God, the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, rest and abide with us now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward